Welcome back to the second part of this lecture about some of the choices we need to make when performing principal component analysis. In the previous video, we discussed situations where it was appropriate to standardize the data before the analysis and what criteria we could use to determine how many principal components to extract. In this second video, we'll see how different types of constraints and bare max rotation can be used to increase the interpretation of the weights. In the previous video, we calculated the following eigenvectors or weights based on the standardized data of the four variables the diastolic and systolic blood pressure, the body weight, and the body height. We will now focus on how to interpret these weights. Since we decided in the previous video to retain only the first two principal components, let's delete these two columns so that we can focus on the weights for the first two components. We'll now try to interpret the meaning of these weights. Recall that these weights are used as coefficients when we calculate the scores for the first principal component and that these specific values are the ones that generate maximal variance of the first principal component. We can interpret the values of the weights as how much each variable contributes to the linear combination. When we do this, we should focus on the absolute values and therefore ignore any negative signs. We see that the weights are quite similar, which means that all variables contribute to a similar extent when the scores of PC1 are computed. The negative signs for the weights associated with the diastolic and systolic blood pressure tell us that these variables are negatively correlated with PC1. Let's focus on the standardized diastolic blood pressure values and the scores for principal component 1. If we plot these two variables against each other, it seems to be a negative correlation between the two variables. This is what we would expect since there is a negative weight associated with the diastolic blood pressure when we calculate the scores for principal component 1. If instead we plot the standardized values of the body weight against the scores of principal component 1, it seems like there is a positive correlation between the two variables, which is expected since the coefficient for the body weight is positive. However, it would be nice if these weights corresponded directly to the Pearson correlation coefficients between the standardized variables and the first principal component. We'll now see how we can convert these weights to represent correlation coefficients instead. In all our previous calculations, the weights have been computed based on the constraint that the sum of the squared weights should be equal to 1. In our example, this means that the sum of the four squared weights should be equal to 1. For example, if we sum the squared weights of the first principal component, we see that it is equal to 1. However, we can use another constraint where the sum of the square weights should be equal to the variance or eigenvalue of the corresponding principal component. For example, we could rescale the weights for principal component 1 so that the sum of the squared weights is equal to 2.41. To rescale the weights, which correspond to our eigenvectors, we can multiply these by the square root of the corresponding eigenvalue. Then we we'll get the following weights, which are called loadings. For example, this loading value is calculated by multiplying the value of this weight by the square root of the variance of principal component 1. Note that this variance is equal to the eigenvalue associated with the first eigenvector. If you now sum these squared loadings for PC1, we'll get the variance for the scores of PC1. 
And if we sum the squared loadings of PC2, we'll get the variance of the scores of PC2. One nice thing with these loadings is that they now correspond to the Pearson correlation coefficients between the original data and the principal component scores when the PCA is based on standardized data. For example, if we create a scatter plot between the standardized diastolic blood pressure values and the scores of PC1, and compute the Pearson correlation coefficient, that coefficient would be equal to minus 0.82. Note that we get the same correlation between the unstandardized data and PC1, because standardizing the variables does not affect their correlation. This helps us to interpret the weights, because the weights now represent the correlation between the original variables and the principal components. For example, this loading value tells us that the correlation coefficient between the body weight and PC2 is minus 0.63. We'll now discuss the method of Varimax rotation, which is a method that increases the interpretation of our weights or loadings. One aim of PCA is to study which variables that are associated to which principal components. If you study the absolute values of the weights for the first principal component, we see that all absolute values are about 0.5. The same is also true for the weights associated with the second component. By using the absolute values, it is impossible to tell which variables that are associated to PC1 or PC2. We have seen that PCA combines the variables in a way that maximizes the variance of the first principal components, which is good when we like to reduce the dimensions, but bad if we like to interpret the components. Once we have identified the number of components to extract, we can rotate them to better understand what they represent. In this example, we'll use Varimax rotation only on the first two components. One common rotation method to use in order to increase the interpretation of the weights is to use the so-called Varimax rotation. However, we'll not go into the mathematical details behind Varimax rotation. Instead, we'll discuss how it works with a simple plot. If we plot the values of the weights for PC1 and PC2, we'll get the following plot. Note that all four variables have about the same value of the weights associated with PC2. In contrast, the variables diastolic and systolic blood pressure are associated with negative weights for PC1, whereas the body weight and height have positive values. Varimax rotation is a method to help us to interpret the weights. One can think of this method as we rotate the axis so that the absolute values of the weights either become closer to 1 or 0. Let's say that we rotate the axis counterclockwise like this. In this new coordinate system, the values of the weights will change. Note that we now call the components rotated components instead of principal components. For example, we see that the weights associated with the diastolic and systolic blood pressure are now about minus 0.7. Whereas the weights for the body weight and height are now close to zero when we focus on the first component. In contrast, the variable's body weight and height now have a relatively high absolute value of the weights associated with the rotated component too. By using Varimax rotation, it is now a lot easier to identify a connection between the rotated components and the variables. We now clearly see that the variables diastolic and systolic blood pressure are associated with component 1 and not with the component 2, because the absolute weights are much higher for component 1 compared to component 2. We say that these two variables load on component 1, 
In addition, we see that the variables body weight and height load on component 2. Usually, one uses some kind of arbitrary cutoff value to determine if the variable load on a component or not. For example, in this case, a cutoff value of 0.65 would be appropriate to use. Because we can then say that the two variables diastolic and systolic blood pressure load on component 1 because their absolute loading values are greater than 0 0.65. Whereas the variables body weight and height load on component 2. Remember that we can convert our weights into loadings by multiplying the eigenvector by the square root of the corresponding eigenvalue. The loading values of this table then correspond to the Pearson correlation coefficients between the given principal component and our variables. After Varimax rotation, we'll have the following loadings, which represent the correlation between the variables and the Varimax rotated scores. These are the corresponding Varimax rotated scores. Most software tools will provide you with a rotation matrix, also called a component transformation matrix, that will be used to rotate the principal component scores into Varimax rotated scores. Note that the variance of these Varimax rotated scores is 1 because the scores have been standardized. However, by using a software, it can provide us with the variance for the rotated unstandardized scores. Note that the variances of the two rotated components are now quite similar. As we have seen before, if you multiply the square root of the variance, which is the standard deviation, by the corresponding scores, we will get the unstandardized scores. If you compare the variance of the rotated component scores with the principal component scores, we see that the first principal component has much more variance compared to the second principal component. In contrast, the variances of the rotated components are about the same because Varimax rotation does not rotate to maximize the variance of the first component. It rotates data to increase the interpretation. Although the component scores have different variance of the Varimax rotation, the total variance has not changed. The loadings of the Varimax rotation now correspond to a correlation between the rotated scores and our variables. For example, the Pearson correlation coefficient between the rotated scores of the first component and the diastolic blood pressure is minus 0.97 and the correlation between the rotated component 2 and the body weight is also minus 0.97. This was the end of this lecture about principal component analysis. In the next lecture we'll discuss discriminant analysis, which is highly related to PCA.